Hello, I'm Madeline Mitchell, and I'm very pleased that we've been able to offer something today instead of the recital, which I was very much looking forward to giving in Birmingham, having so enjoyed audiences and my previous visit to Symphony Hall. Um, so we're grateful to the Barber Institute for suggesting that we uh, talk and play instead for you. And today's recital covers British music of about a century, and all the pieces have a, a, a certain um, special connection with me, and I'm very grateful to Claire Hammond for taking this on. We're, we're going to start with the three pieces by Herbert Howells, and these were composed in 1917. Howells was a professor at the Royal College of Music when I was a student there, and, and I remember he was always dressed in very smart pinstripe suit and um, quite dapper with a buttonhole. And uh, here I am all these years later with the three pieces. He came from Gloucester and uh, they have a connection with, with that too. The second, called Chosen, is based on, it's a nickname for church down in Gloucestershire, which is where his wife came from. And the piece, which is like a hymn, was played at their wedding. It's preceded by a pastorale, which is influenced probably by um, the style of his good friend Vaughan Williams. But the third piece, which is the one that we're going to present today, is a Russian lament, and it's significant, I think, it was written in 1917. It's called a Luchinushka, and uh, it's a really beautiful piece, which I did for BBC Radio 3 uh, on In Tune Live with a pianist from Moscow, and they very kindly allowed us to share this recording with you today because I haven't recorded the piece. We're then going to present um, excerpts from our recent recording of the work which Robert Saxton wrote for me last year. It's a marvellous five-minute suite and I'll let Robert introduce it. Um, Robert and I have known each other for many years and so it was lovely to have this piece. Um, when I first came back from America, having been a Fulbright scholar, uh, my first job was I was lucky enough to um, be awarded the position of violinist in the Fires of London, as well as um, starting out as a soloist. And this group, this seminal group at the forefront of contemporary music with Sir Peter Maxwell Davis was a baptism of fire and a huge privilege and Robert Saxton had written a piece for the fires. It wasn't until many years later when we were both involved with the Bangor New Music Festival in North Wales and I was performing the concerto which Gitto Pugh uh, wrote for me and Robert's uh, string and trumpet piece was being performed and it was in the pub afterwards the sort of way things happen that Robert said he'd really like to write me a piece so this substantial work um, arrived and I premiered this at the Three Choirs Festival last summer with Claire Hammond along with the Howells and the piece which is going to follow that which is the wonderful violin sonata by Grace Williams uh, she too was at the Royal College of Music from 1926 to 1930. She studied with Vaughan Williams, who obviously thought highly of her because he recommended her for the Octavia, the prestigious travelling scholarship to Vienna in 1930, where she wrote this violin sonata. And then she came back to London and she taught in schools and this piece, this violin sonata, hadn't been published till recently and it's a rather nice story how I discovered it. I've performed a lot in Wales and done quite a lot for the BBC in Cardiff and I was there to see my old friend Gwyn Williams who was BBC producer and his last job was the director of the Wales Music Information Centre known as TCARES at the Millennium Centre in Cardiff and it was partly social and partly to look at music by Welsh composers and he showed me this manuscript of the violin sonata by Grace Williams and I thought it looked very interesting. The, on the title page she had written in her own handwriting second movement worth performing, first and third not good enough which is a bit sad and I looked at this and thought well I, I think it really is worth performing and fortunately we were able to present a performance of this at the first International Women's Work in Music conference, again in Bangor. 
and it went down very well. And I thought, well, what else is there? Um, it would be nice to record this, which set me on a, on a quest to discover lots of other chamber music by Grace Williams in manuscript form mainly at the National Library of Wales. And with my London Chamber Ensemble and the support of the British Music Society and the Ralph Vaughan Williams Trust, I was able to put together a whole album for Naxos, all world premiere recordings of the chain music by Grace Williams. We're just going to offer the second movement today, and this is um, a live performance which I gave with the pianist Constantin Lapshin for Classic FM from the Parry Rooms at the Royal College of Music, rather aptly. It's a beautiful, haunting slow movement based on a folk tune. Um, I think it's heartfelt. And uh, you can hear the rest of the violin sonata um, on the Naxos album. Thank you for listening.
for violin and piano was written in 2018 and 19 for the violinist Madeline Mitchell, who is a long-standing colleague and is one of the finest violinists in the country. She's also noted for specialising in contemporary music as well as the standard repertoire. I was also most fortunate that the premiere at the Three Choirs Festival in Gloucester last year in 2019 um, was given by Madeline and the pianist was Claire Hammond, who has recorded my music, uh, my piano music, and is a wonderful player and also very supportive of contemporary music as well as the standard repertoire. It was the first time that Madeline and Claire had worked together as a duo. And it was a superb concert that they gave at Gloucester, um, including the premiere of My Suite, which they've subsequently recorded at St John the Evangelist Church in Oxford. Um, a very, very fine recording and extracts of which you're about to hear. There are five movements to the suite. It's not a conventional suite in the Baroque sense. There are no, uh, although there is a dance, it's not a Baroque dance. Um, the five movements are Awakening, Horizon, Jacob and the Angel, Bells of Memory and Quest. And the idea of the piece, which lasts about 18 minutes overall, is that it begins with a sense of something emerging. It's rapid and bright and optimistic. And there are tonal or modal pitch centres to each movement which span the whole work. And it goes um, across, a, I hope, a logical cycle. Horizon, the second slow movement, is very still and the textures span out, the violin reaching very high note, the piano very low note at the end, so that the space in the middle is um, captured or encapsulated as a, as a kind of space between um, points where you might be standing and a distant horizon and was inspired as many of my work works have been by the Norfolk coast where I was partly brought up and where my wife and I and our family still go a great deal and the ideas I remember as a child of looking out at the sea and the long sandy beach um, and the point at the horizon where the sky and the sea meet and you can't tell which is which has always been something that has been very much with me and I've translated, hopefully, or tried to translate into musical symbolism or imagery in more than one work. Jacob and the Angel is a very fast dance and um, refers to another aspect of my upbringing. Um, I come from the Anglo-Jewish community with one Yorkshire Christian grandma, and I'm interested in the whole Judeo-Christian tradition. And Jacob and the Angel, of course, refers uh, to the incident where Jacob wrestles all night with the angel that uh, it's interpreted in various ways the old testament story the angel may have been god or as god is not portrayable in judaism nobody's quite sure but the struggle with god um if you like this wrestling and jacob being wounded in the thigh and it is after that that jacob's name is changed to israel and israel it means um a struggle or or um dialogue of, of, of a dialectical kind with the eternal one and of course jacob epstein did a fantastic sculpture um which is in the birmingham uh, art gallery which uh, is quite wonderful um and that was also in my mind it's again about eternity and dialectical approaches to music, which I'm very interested in goal-directed music, music which perhaps in the traditional sense moves from a beginning to an end. Then Bells of Memory is a slow movement where the violin and, uh, um, in a way uh, laments and the piano is bells. It is, um, it was inspired partly by um, Holocaust Memorial Day, um, and the whole um, memories which I was brought up with um, of uh, just after the war, um, with um, the whole experience of, of being 
um, in a situation post-Holocaust where one is very fortunate to have had a new life um, when some of my family and other members of the community didn't. And then Quest. Quest is the final movement and again is quite a struggle. It goes from very low dark music in the piano to a triumphant uh, triadic close which is related to the first movement. The whole piece, as I've already said, makes one huge progression harmonically. And the idea of quest, which could or may should have been the first movement, a quest is a searching, a setting out from somewhere. But here, the quest is, is the final movement. And that's because at the end, you're not closing. You're just ending, hopefully, hoping that the journey will not go round again, but go on to new life and create something new. Quest is also the title of a book by my, my maternal grandfather was Polish and he was a mathematician. He actually worked for the civil service and was involved in the Ministry of Health at the time the NHS was set up. His cousin, Leopold Infeld, was a very distinguished physicist who worked with Albert Einstein at Princeton. And he wrote an autobiography called Quest about how he came from a very orthodox Jewish family in Poland but became an atheist and discovered modern physics. And so this suite is in many ways a biographical piece. It's also, apart from my violin concerto of a quarter of a century ago, the only time I've ever written for solo violin, which is my own instrument, although I was never a particularly good player. So this work for violin and piano is very close to me in an autobiographical sense. Um, and um, I'm incredibly grateful to Madeleine Mitchell and Claire Hammond for the superb recording which they have achieved. <laughs>